Um, what's your name? My name is Dana Bornwell. I'm Lindsay. My name is Lauren Brewer. My name is Kayla. And what do you do? I am an educator with the Savannah Chatham County Public School System. I'm a science teacher at the Savannah Arts Academy. I teach honors chemistry and AP environmental science. I go to school at Savannah Arts Academy in Savannah. So I work at the Ty Valley Marine Science Center. That's where we are right now. Um, I'm also a college student. I go to Armstrong, uh, Georgia Southern campus and majoring in biology and I'm about to graduate next semester. Do you live in coastal Georgia? I actually consider myself to live in coastal Georgia, but I am in a county that is not on the coast. Uh, my husband and I actually live in Effingham County, which is west of Savannah. And as a result of that, we choose to commute into the Savannah area. Um, but I still consider us to be integral in the part of living on the coast. I live in Tennessee. Do you like the beach? Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. It's a little cold today. Yeah, I'm from Columbus, so like four hours inland. What made you want to work in biology and on the beach? Yeah, so I have always loved animals. It's always been a passion of mine, and I've also always loved the ocean. Like I was just fascinated by it as a child. I would go out with my goggles and like look for animals and swim around and watch little crabs and snails. So when I got older, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a job I can have that combines the two and take care of marine animals. I was like, that's super cool. So yeah, I decided to pursue that and pursue um, wildlife rehabilitation, training, husbandry, all those kind of things. Georgia's coast is largely undeveloped, unlike neighboring states such as Florida or South Carolina. But higher tides and storm surge bring risk of flooding and erosion to the 100 miles of coast. Georgia has experienced 10 inches of sea level rise since 1935, and the Georgia Department of Natural Resources predict a four to six foot rise by 2100. This can impact almost 200,000 people. Just a three foot rise in sea level would cause the loss of 36 square miles of salt marsh, which is larger than the city of Brunswick and almost a third of Savannah. I think one of the things that makes Georgia special is its marshlands. I'm not a native Savannian, but I have married into a Savannah family. My husband and his mother were born and raised here. Um, at one point, uh, my husband grew up on the marsh, um, along White Bluff Road, and it is just an area that until you live here and you, in, until you live here and you, if, if you don't see the beauty of it, if you don't, if you're not exposed to it, uh, you don't understand the beauty of that saltwater marsh. There is so much biodiversity in the salt marsh, um, and the salt marsh is just a very important ecosystem. There's something called the outwelling hypothesis, where salt marshes produce so much nutrients that a lot of those nutrients outflow into surrounding environments, so like out into the ocean. So salt marshes help in that aspect. Um, and they're also like really important for fishing and different industries like that also to feed people, which that's an important thing. I mean, there's always a balance of protecting wildlife, but always also food for humans. Specifically around sea level rise, um, as an educator, I feel that it's my role. Um, I teach AP Environmental Science is to educate my students um, to provide them learning opportunities where they study on their own as well as study in the classroom how that sea level rise is starting to come about and what is its root cause um, from there also um, having them research what it is that they can do in their own lives to make changes pollution is a widespread problem in 2007 16 years ago the Tybee Beautification Association and Rivers Alive collected 5,400 pounds of plastic. In a similar cleanup by Clean Coast, volunteers collected almost 2,000 pounds of combined plastic from state-protected Osaba Island and federally managed Blackbeard Island and Cumberland Island. I would guess that it's worse now just by natural you know patterns and also like that right there that container behind you is just from one summer on Tybee and that's not even all of it that's just what could fit in that tank you know so it's like it's insane and thankfully there are a lot of things being done nowadays to kind of help mitigate it like 
in our coastal towns, like there's um, Tybee Cleanup and the Beach Project where they go out every Sunday and clean up. Um, and I'm sure there's others that maybe do it more often, but thank you for stuff being done. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely a problem. Residents of coastal Georgia, such as the volunteers of Tybee Clean Beach, get together and collect plastic from beaches and marshes. Um, I feel like I do my part by just little things like not littering, etc. But I feel like I could definitely take a bigger role and maybe go help like clean up the beach or something like that. Do you think you will do that anytime soon? Um, well, actually today I'm going to go volunteer. Just educating people um, in any way that I can. Um, obviously in a, in a gentle manner, but just, you know, helping people be aware of like what they can actually do and being aware of the actual statistics and what's happening. Because a lot of people just don't think about it, you know? Like making your own personal choices. Like, hey, I'm not going to use plastic straws. I'm going to use reusable bags. I'm going to use Tupperware instead of, you know, styrofoam, like things like that. that are just easy ways that you can help and then spreading that to other people. We have been trying to implement a, a recycle um, program here at the Savannah Arts Academy since about 2018. Uh, we've got very close to getting ready to do it right before COVID hit. And then obviously with COVID um, protocols, we were not in the building or we were in the building um, during hybrid teaching. So. It's just been in the past year that we've been able to sort of try to put that infrastructure in place and we've come very close to getting it implemented, getting a recycle program implemented at the school in the fourth quarter of this year. Um, it's more realistic that we're going to do it in August of 2023 and in talking with some of the city officials. Um, at this time, we're one of the few schools that is interested and wanting and moving forward in a recycle program. So having that program be student-led, be student-initiated and student-led is a way of teaching and, and giving students the opportunity to lead in those types of um, examples and in making those types of improvements. And I think there's just a ton of information and a ton of experience that Savannah Art students are gonna get putting that in place in August. You know, we're big recyclers coming from Chicago to Tennessee. They don't really recycle. So that was something that we had to like adjust to. Um, mm -hmm. Just keeping it clean. And then also like doing your part when you're on the coast, um, like picking up trash when you're out on the beach. And, mm -hmm. you know, we usually, if we see trash, we pick it up. Doing just the simple, easy things that take two seconds and take an easy change that make a big difference. And then if you spread that and tell the people that are in your life, then hopefully it'll be a good influence on them. Well, one of the things, one of the concepts that I teach in my classroom, um, I try to have students uh, think about the world they live in from the perspective of, and this is not my quote, right? This is, this is concepts from environmentalists of the past. And that is that we did not inherit the earth from our grandparents. Rather, we are borrowing this earth from our grandchildren. I think it's really important to maintain the environment because so that future generations can enjoy the environment like we do and so that they can be healthy and not have to live with polluted air and a dirty earth. Like I used to love, um, I used to always love the coast growing up, but I didn't know much about it, but now living near the coast, there's so much to know and so much to learn, and also about what what part I play in it um, and in protecting it. I like that I feel like I can appreciate the environment more because the water is just, and the ocean is just so pretty.